National Taxpayers Union Executive Vice President Brandon Arnold. Well, Brandon, I know if they use reconciliation, he may not have to worry about selling anybody but fellow Democrats, and they're willing to sign on to just about anything. But, but Joe Biden is not LBJ, and he's not, he's not even Joe Biden in his prime. I mean, let's be honest about it. So how does he sell? He's, at some point, he's got to sell another $3 trillion worth of spending. Yeah, it's going to be a tough sell. There's no question about it, because the, th- the majority in the Senate is, is absolutely razor thin, as we all know. Even using reconciliation, he's still going to have to keep his party together and get all 50 votes, including moderates like Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema. I think that's going to be tough, especially when you're looking at the size of the national debt right now, $28 trillion and counting. The plan that has been floated, and, and obviously details are still scarce, we're still trying to piece things together, would add another trillion dollars onto that debt because it's $3.7 trillion in spending paid for, quote unquote, paid for by uh, $2.7 trillion in new taxes. Right. So the math doesn't work. It's, it's still adding to the national debt. And these tax increases, of course, are going to slow down economic growth and stunt the recovery that we're hoping will happen sooner rather than later. Brandon, I don't know about you, but I hate that phrase paid for when talking to taxes because it's not paid for. It comes out of the productive private sector and goes into the unproductive public sector, which usually misuses a tremendous amount of that money. Maybe not 100 percent, but sometimes it's close to that. Uh, You look at what happened uh, after the, the, the last Great Recession and a lot of that money just went down the tubes. So paid for, I think, is the wrong way to do it. Also, the idea that you can pay for it, if you want to use that expression, uh, by just taxing the rich is impossible. It doesn't work. The math doesn't work. There aren't enough rich people to pay for that. It's going to hit the middle class, will it not? Oh, absolutely. Even when you just look at the corporate tax rate, people think, oh, big corporations in in New York or California, I don't have to worry if we raise taxes on those. Well, the truth is corporate tax increases are passed down to consumers and they're passed down to workers. That means lower wages for workers means higher prices for consumers. The economic literature on that is actually actually very, very consistent in showing that pass down happens. And that means people are going to have less take home pay. In fact, the, the, uh, the tax foundation, they modeled this pay, this tax increase going to moving the corporate rate from 21 to 28 percent. And every single income group, whether you're poor, whether you're rich or whether you're somewhere in between, right. saw a reduction in after tax income just because of the corporate tax increase. That's not even counting the host of other tax increases that have been floated as part of this plan. And we have so much history here to, to, to guide us. And apparently it's not guiding this administration. By the way, we just had a full screen up. Maybe we can put it back of, of Lyndon Johnson. His Great Society program, which was meant, by the way, uh, to, to end poverty. In fact, poverty is up a, a tick from when he was president, so it didn't didn't work on that level. But look at how much money was spent on so-called legacy costs. That means it wasn't just a one-shot spending deal. Uh, he worked into the system all of these these so-called poverty programs that became a legacy of his, and over the years have have cost twenty two trillion dollars. It's likely that a lot of what Uh, President Biden is talking about in his plan is going to be these legacy programs that will long outlast just this one spending. It will cost trillions of more money in years to come. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You look at even more recently than LBJ, you look at uh, what the Obama administration did back in 2009 when they tried to get us out of the recession through spending. They pushed nearly a trillion dollars into the economy. Yes, we created jobs, but we did so at a cost of about four million dollars per job. So I guess government works if we're willing to, to make it that incredibly inefficient to create jobs. By contrast, in 2017, we sank money back into the economy, right. pushed money back into the private sector. Sector, and we had one of the strongest e- economies in recent memory. So uh, I think if we just look back to even recent history, we don't even have to look back to LBJ. Right. We see that the path Biden is advancing here is completely well, and, wrong. And of course, before the, the Trump tax cuts, which led to such a boom in prosperity, we also had the Obama Biden uh, tax increases in 2011-12, which just took all the steam out of the recovery. We ended up with one of the weakest recoveries we'd had from a recession ever, because just when companies were getting back on their feet, uh, we taxed them more, increased their expenses. And now just as companies are getting back on their feet uh, after the lockdowns, we're going to tax them more and they're going to have the the rug pulled out from under them, right? Quickly. 
That's absolutely right. And, and one of the tax increases that would be most devastating is increasing the top individual rate because that is what pass-through entities, sole yeah. proprietorships, LLCs pay, not the, the corporate rate, which is problematic in its own right, but raising taxes at individual rate is really going to hurt small businesses at a time where, where they're struggling and, and barely getting by in many cases. These are mom and pop franchises that put every penny that they make right back into their business. It may look good on paper, uh, but you ask them if they're rich and they'll tell you the truth that they're not. Brandon, great to see you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Coming up, a New York Assembly.